Good everyone, welcome to this video, and today it's a spare review on the ZSU-37 anti-aircraft vehicle. Now, I'm going to be brutally honest, this thing is not the best. When I was spading it, I had a questionable time with the vehicle, and I just, in general, did not enjoy the vehicle that much. I mean, it, it was good for its role, it did the anti-aircraft role well, I just think it could be better. Now, a lot of people berate this thing for the, the gun it uses, the 61K 37mm. I find it to be pretty effective. It feels very similar to the 40mm both his guns that the M19 uses, the Crusader AA uses, etc. However, I just think with this tank being the way it is, you've got to play it differently. But thankfully, this thing's actually heard of armoring its actual ammo racks. So the ammo racks are mainly stored in the turret and the side bulges on the hull, which are obviously 15 mm thick. But the rest can easily be accessed by roof mounted machine guns on tanks and aircraft. As you can see, obviously, we've got the commander, we've got the loader, or one of the loaders. And you can just see ammunition is just spread all across the back of the turret. Now obviously I do recommend carrying full ammo because obviously it's an SPA, you're probably going to be firing a lot at planes and if you're inexperienced you're going to have to get used to the gun. Reload time is actually longer than most SPAA which makes no sense because it's only a single gun but whatever. In terms of the chassis it's on, it's based on a modified SU-76 chassis. Obviously it's got the 76mm removed because the 76 was no longer adequate. And um, looking up details, I could only find that this thing was built, or only one of these were built, to about five of these were built. And personally I think it was just a one-off. And it wouldn't surprise me that it's in the tech tree because of that reason. So, what's the chassis like in terms of armor. Well, if you're looking for armor on this thing, you're looking at the wrong place. 35 millimeters thick across the front of the hull, 45 on the lower, 10 underneath, so even high explosive rounds underneath the vehicle are a danger. 15 millimeters on the side, six on the top, and obviously the roof is open topped here on the turret. Rear is 10, lower part is 15, rear of the turret is eight. Front to the turret, 15, shall we say like the, the gun shield is 15 as well. This thing's obviously not built for its armour. What about mobility? Well, it's not too bad. I mean, I've certainly had better, that is for certain. And the track modification is probably one of the most important ones for this vehicle, simply due to the fact that these little tracks have next to no grip when stock. And they're very easily shot off. I've noticed that even just a simple light anti-tank round hit to the tracks will just blow it off entirely. So you've got to be really careful with your tracks. Um, in terms of climbing, once you get the actual vehicle's track modification done, it's not too bad. However, I just don't think that this vehicle is a great SPAA 4.7, considering the M19... The Crusader AA, they just feel better to drive and better to actually use. You do get a slightly higher rate of fire with the 37mm, but to be honest, it doesn't make that much of a difference. I did have to laugh though, because I did have one engagement um, where I had some retards. I, I sent it to DTT, I bet he's going to love it. And yeah, it, it was actually pretty funny. Essentially, three retards pushed me out of a capture zone because one of the mates cut me off and I fired my gun at him, and things like that. One other point I'd make is that the turret traverse is actually pretty slow for an SPA, 28 degrees a second. It's slow. It isn't the fastest turret in the world. You are going to have to move your hull sometimes to engage aircraft. But otherwise, this thing can do pretty well. And to be honest, I can. Like, I felt myself using this thing more as a tank buster. But now most people are probably going to complain about something about this vehicle, and most people are going to point it out anyway. Belts. Now, on the whole, they're pretty alright. Obviously, you've got your HE rounds, they're pretty good. AP rounds, they're pretty good. This is the belt everyone used to complain about. HVAP 
T. It actually has HVAP with 102 millimeters of pen. Personally, I don't see what the fuss is about because obviously this thing used to be a full HVAP belt, and to be honest, it doesn't feel that effective even with the full HVAP belt because I had this HVAP belt before it was nerfed. Um, didn't even feel that great. I preferred a normal armor piercing, and this just doesn't feel great. And obviously, with it having two high explosive rounds mixed in, you're going to be mostly firing in a HE round when it comes to firing out the gun. So personally, just stick with your HE and stick with your AP. You're not going to be able to kill much, obviously, same with the Crusader A and the M19. But you've got a better fire rate than the M19 and Crusader AA, so just bear that in mind. <clears throat> so, let's see what we've got up to in the actual vehicle. But before we do, I'm just going to show you my stats of the vehicle. Where is it? Uh, 26 deaths, 58 air kills, 20 ground targets, which is... 26. It's 278, so that is a 3 to 1 kill death ratio. Not the best, but for an SBAA, that's pretty average. Well, for most people, it's above average. Right, so let's get into the battle. We are on Middle East for once. It, I've noticed this map's come into rotation a lot. I like the map because there's quite a few places that you can go to, and there's a spot that I employ in this map, which is pretty good for SPAA, in my opinion. And we also have a guest appearance. Well, not really a guest appearance, just a special, quotation marks, appearance. And to be truthfully honest, this battle was just a laugh. I survive it, but... <laughs> oh, some of the teammates I had. I believe the guy who's the special appearance is that C-B-U-H-D-U-3-E-L. I think it's him, if I remember rightly, because he was a Russian player. He, he doesn't do much for our team, <laughs> just as a heads up. So in this battle, I did have the HVAP T. Obviously, I was giving it a test run. Personally, I don't see what the fuss is about it, but... It, it can pen most of the targets that you'll see, but... To be honest, I don't find it to be that great. So at this time, I was... How far was I over the spade? I was about halfway through it at this point. Um, and, well... It just, it, it was a bit of a long spade as well. Which was surprising because it's a Russian anti-aircraft. You'd expect this thing to be done in five matches with the way Gaijin treats Russian vehicles sometimes. But no, surprisingly. I was a bit late spawning in because I was actually turning on my Spotify and answering an email. So, yeah. The XC and M18, obviously I've got the HVAP T in the breach. But, um, obviously, this is the match where I really learned that HVAP-T is questionable at best. So I fire a HVAP round, it takes out the gunner, commander, and the loader. And then, obviously, I finish him off with the regular armor piercing. The regular armor piercing is perfect for dealing with M18, so that's my first kill. But like I say, this... This gun can work against M18s. I, I find myself killing M18s very easily. Because the gun's just got such a good rate of fire. If you know where to hit an M18, you're just going to penetrate it all day long with an armor piercing round. The armor piercing rounds themselves have pretty good penetration. So that's always nice. The gun's very easy to aim when it comes to ground targets. Because it's quite high velocity. You can see they're 880 meters a second. The HVAP rounds, um, it doesn't actually tell you the muzzle velocity. The HE rounds have a slightly lower, but to be honest, you don't feel a difference with that. Obviously, at this point, I'm just looking around, seeing what my team's up to, and, well, this is another one of those teams that, no, no matter what, they just seem to want to die all the time. Lovely. But um, my team currently is dying to the north and everything. That's just standard. Like I said, this little guy can work pretty well. Little bit of advice for it, actually. This goes for the M19 as well. You may notice how I'm parked with my hull like this. Obviously, there was a firefly that was going around the back of these rocks up near the B 
B5, B4 line. You want to park, if you're in cover, you want to park with your turret facing out the rear of the cover. Like, like how I'm parked here, it's quite hard for me to like establish a way to express it, but essentially you want to park like this if you're in cover. Because then you can back up, fire with your turret, and then quickly get back into cover so they can't take out your engine, your driver, or your transmission. I find this to be the best way to do it in the M19 and this, simply due to the rear mounted turret. But um, the funny thing is though, even if you get hit in one of your engines on this vehicle, you lose them both. I've had a... I can't remember what it was. It was, um, I think it was a... I think it was an enemy anti-aircraft, I can't remember what it was. And um, they essentially, they hit the rear engine, which is this one here, and both engines died. I managed to kill him, but even so. Because in real life, this thing could drive on one engine. This thing could drive, but not very fast. I think I actually did die in that battle to a Sherman or something. I, I can't quite remember it. But, um, like I say, it's, it's one of those vehicles that, historically, this thing could drive on one engine, but it wasn't very good at it. It's sort of like a... Sort of like a Poto 631. It could fly on one engine. We won't get very far without it too. <laughs> Tell you that right now. Well, so this is a ground vehicle. So here comes our guest appearance. It is C-U-B-U-H. Obviously I'm just sat in my spot. And for some reason he just decides to put a full load of HVAP into me. I have no idea why. I'd just like to point out what he's actually done for the team. And that is Jack for the side of squats. Two deaths, no nothing, level 100. And he he doesn't spade, he doesn't do anything. He's absolutely useless. I think the only thing he gets in terms of points is an assist this game. And yeah, if he doesn't he does not do a lot for this team. However, I always pull my way, like I try to pull my way if my team's gonna die though I will just sit in back in cover so obviously at this point I've got the armor pistol loaded but I'm gonna try to HVAP against this Sherman now obviously because that Sherman has sloped armor the HVAP round won't do shit that's the main thing, you gotta obviously I'm switching to the HE belts at this point and well, I'm opening up with a 37. But you may notice a friendly neighborhood retard in his whirlwind isn't even engaging him. And it takes a IL-2 th Type 3, not the Boris, not the premium, to actually kill him. So at that point, I just crit that P61, kill a Tigger mate. I do apologize, but he had to be dealt with. He was going to kill an IL-2, can't have that. So... <laughs> He then hits a, he hits the side of a mountain and he is now dead. Sorry mate, had to be done. So I fire a couple of HQ rounds just to get a retard to actually pay attention because he's, he's not doing anything. He's just going to sit around driving around in circles. I reckon his little brother must have invaded the freaking PC or something because he was about as useful as a two year old. But obviously here comes that Sherman again. Obviously we're going to be seeing him a bit later where I deal with him. But like I say, this thing is not the best anti-aircraft vehicle in the world. But it gets job done. It's very similar to the Crusader. Very good anti-aircraft vehicle. Sometimes can be bad. But it can get the job done. M19. Fantastic anti-aircraft vehicle. The only anti-aircraft vehicle that I'm dreading in the future is the M42 Duster. Same guns as the M19. It's on a Walker Bulldog chassis. I don't like the Walker Bulldog. <laughs> so, and plus it's at 6.7 where it should not be. I know Fly Daily did a video on that thing, and well, he drove it like a retard and thought it was going to work. Newsflash, pal, it doesn't. But at this point, I'm just going to put this a bit forward, obviously. I am watching Mr. Gan, and obviously he's in a cast Sherman. One of my favorite, it was actually the first Sherman that I truly fell in love with, because I just loved it great spade obviously I did the 
that thing spayed when the, the T23 turret was added to it, so it added improved armor and things like that. And it also had the stabilizer added to it. Now at this point, he's playing anti-aircraft. I, I don't blame him. I saw that Sherman in the background. And at this point, obviously he doesn't have a clue I'm here, so I thought, yeah, whatever. I'll try the H-Trap rounds against him. But the H-Trap round didn't do much, so I just went back to the regular armor piercing. And there we go. Second tank kill. On a Sherman, of all things. Our friendly neighborhood retard has now died a third time, doing absolutely nothing. He's come back in a lost wind. He's not going to be doing much, as you can imagine. I would really love to know why this guy is even in the game in the first place, because he's level 100 and he's about as useless tits on a fish. But no. He's, he's come back in the last wind and he's going to continue to be absolutely useless. Obviously, since I knew there was a Sherman coming around the rear, I moved to a different position. I moved to just behind these rocks here. There's actually quite a good few spots for anti-aircraft on this map, and I do have to commemorate Gaijin. One of the favourite spots I like to use is just over here in the spawn of the other side. You can get up into these like rocks, and there's a really nice spot for anti-aircraft and tank destroyers to sit. So here comes a, uh, Mr. Gan again, obviously he's in his P-47. And well, he's coming straight at me, and you can imagine my face when I saw those thousand pound bombs coming at me but I managed to kill him he missed his bomb by a country mile and that's my final kill for the game I got two kills on air two kills on ground not bad for me of course our friendly neighborhood retard is just being a retard there's a reason why I put special appearance this is all he does this whole game Obviously, I'm just watching him. I swear his younger brother or sister invaded his computer because he's extremely useless. He then starts shooting at... I, I can't remember what he's actually shooting at. Let's jump to his view. I can't remember what he's actually shooting at. He's shooting at what looks like anti-aircraft gun positions. And... Obviously, I'm just there shooting at him, just basically saying, focus on the objective, but he's not. And he's not going to do anything for the rest of the game. So what do I think of the CSU? Well, it's not a bad vehicle, like I said, but I think it could be better. Like I say, Russia do need, well, they do need some more anti-aircraft vehicles. That I do have to say, like, um, it's 4-7 and then it jumps to 7-7, seven, seven, if I remember rightly. There's quite a big jump there, but... I'm sure Gaijin will get around to it since it's a Russian vehicle. Also, interesting point to note, those eagle-eyed viewers that are looking at the front plate right now. Yes, that is the driver's foot. Gaijin are that lazy, they can't even model his foot inside the vehicle. And no, I don't know if you can kill the driver without even penetrating the tank. I haven't tested that yet. But anyway, I'll let you guys off. I hope you enjoyed today's review on the ZSU-37. Like I say, could be better. Um, if anything, I find the Oswin to be superior to this vehicle by far, but hey, it's your opinion. That's just how it is. I'll see you all on the next one.